This truck, it's not a daily driver. And because I don't drive it that much, the battery level can drop down a little bit. And when the battery level drops in lead acid batteries, it shortens the lifespan of it, which means I have to replace the battery more often. Now, the obvious answer is to just hook up a battery tender when I'm not driving it, but I got tired of having to run an extension cord, pop the hood, hook the tender up to the battery, prop the hood open, and then leave the extension cord draped across the driveway, sometimes for weeks on end. So I wanted to come up with a better solution. Now on my truck, I happen to have a tow package, which means I have this little electronic port here that connects to the lights on my trailer. Now some SUVs have something like this. A lot of trucks have these. If your vehicle doesn't have a dedicated port like this, you can install that. But today I'm just gonna be focusing on how to connect my tender through this port. So on the cover of this plug, you can see that it has a little pin out here. It shows a positive terminal here and a negative terminal here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open this up and we're going to measure to see if these pins are live even when the truck is off. And so I've hooked a multimeter up to those pins and you can see here it's measuring about 13 volts, which means I should be able to supply voltage to these pins and charge the battery right through this. Now, if you find that you don't have power at your trailer port, it's worth checking your manual because sometimes either the fuse is missing or wiring to the fuse isn't hooked up. And in other vehicles, you'll find that you can even switch the position of the fuse to change the outlet from switched to always on power. So it's worth checking the manual. Now, this is my battery tender. My plan is to just connect this tender to this trailer adapter through this wire that I have. This is just an old extension cord, but it coils really nicely. It's good enough for outdoor use. But the catch is with this tender, it has proprietary plugs on it. So if I wanted to make an adapter or buy an adapter that already exists to this, it would have to be within NOCO's system, which is pretty annoying. I don't want to buy another adapter like just this alligator adapter is like 10 or 15 bucks. And just for this connector, it's not worth it to me. And so instead, and one of the reasons I wanted to make this video is to encourage you to have the courage to cut this off and put on your own connector so you can make whatever adapters you want. So I'm gonna show you how to do that quick. Now, one of the things that I wanted to call out right away is that NOCO, for whatever reason, puts fuse holders on their adapters rather than putting the fuse holder on the charger itself. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut off these ends. I'm gonna install this fuse holder on the charger itself. And so that way, any adapters that I make won't need an additional fuse holder because there's already one installed on the charger. So what I'm gonna do is cut off this proprietary connector. And now what I can do is just cut a little slit into the end of it and pull these apart all the way back down about the length of this fuse holder. And now I can cut off this red wire down here. Now I'm gonna strip both of these wires here. I've got this little butt splice crimp connector here. I'm gonna stick on here. And then before I crimp this onto here, I'm just gonna take a piece of heat shrink and I'm gonna slide this over this wire. And now I can crimp on this butt splice here. Now I can go ahead and just slide this heat shrink over my new connection and hit it with the heat gun. Now the connectors that I chose to use for the end of this, these are called Anderson Power Poles. Now this is just a generic brand, but what I can do is actually slide these things together to form a little two pole connector. And so again, I can strip these wires. And on my crimpers, I can take the connector, stick it into this little holder, just like that. And now I can take these wires and I can just stick them into here. And now I can crimp it down. Just like that. And now I can take one of my red connectors here and this part here locks over that little piece of metal in there. So it slides in just like that and clicks. Now we can do the same for the black side. And now we can just connect them together. Something like that. 
So now at this point, I have new connectors on the charger itself. I have new connectors on my existing adapter. I've cut off the existing proprietary connectors. And I have these connectors now that just slide together, something like that. Now there are a couple ways to lock these together so that they don't just slide apart. The first way is with this little roll pin that slides inside of this hole here in between the two that keeps them from separating. Now I found that when I use these little roll pins, it actually separates the ends a little bit. I don't know if that's because this is a cheaper brand of Anderson Power Pole or if it's actually just the way they work. The other way that you can keep these stuck together is to just use a dab of super glue and that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of this glue and insert it on the inside of this dovetail here. And then I can take my black side here, make sure I get it lined up right, and I'm just gonna slide it in. Now at this point, I've entirely replaced our proprietary connectors with these Anderson power poles. My original adapter to these alligator clips clips in just fine. I also have my extension cord all wired up. Now the only thing left to do is to wire up the other side of this extension cord to our trailer adapter. So this end just pops off and you can see all of our connectors inside. And you can see this one is even labeled. We have black over here and white down here. So this is the positive and negative. So we're gonna connect our black and white wire to these using this wire. So I've stripped this wire back a little bit. We don't need this ground wire. So I'm just gonna clip that off. Now I can go ahead and strip back these wires just a little bit here so that I can slide on these little crimps. Now I can stick this whole thing through here. I've gone ahead and connected my wires to the terminals and now I can just slide this back over the top. I can tighten down the little set screw right here and then I can go ahead and tighten down our stress relief right here. Now it's important to me that this battery tender comes on the second that I plug this in. I don't want to have to go into the garage to turn this on. And also, I just want to test the wiring to make sure everything looks good. So, let's try it. Oh, looks like it's backwards. That's not good. I made a simple mistake and connected the black wire to the black connector, not recognizing that it should have been the red connector to represent positive. So I went ahead and fixed that. Let's try it again. All I did was plug this in and we saw that it automatically turned on and has started charging the truck. Now, one thing I wanna do before I finish this project is to get some silicone here. And I'm just gonna put this inside of this stress relief. I don't want any water getting inside this connector and causing any corrosion issues, possibly freezing issues. And so I'm just gonna seal it up here. Doesn't need to be super pretty. We just wanna make sure everything stays nice and dry. Another thing I wanted to do is protect the contacts inside of here. I don't want my plug like seizing and getting stuck in here. I don't want them to corrode. And so I'm just gonna use some fluid film. It's meant for electrical contacts. And I'm just gonna coat everything inside of here. That's it, just like that. So this NOCO charger came with a little wall mount. I didn't think I would ever use it, but here I am. So this just clips into here, something like this. And then you can take this little Velcro strap and it just goes around something like this and just holds it in place. And now anytime that I use the truck, when I'm done with it, I can just take this thing right off of its holder here, come down here, plug it into the truck, and I am done. The truck is now charging. It's going to just stay on the tender as long as I leave this truck parked. At the end of the day, this is not that much work for a lot of advantage. I don't have to worry about getting anything out, putting things away, uncoiling and coiling wires. This is just a very simple way to keep my truck topped up all season long. I'll put links in the description to everything I used in this video from this adapter to the charger to all of the electrical connectors that I used, as well as some crimpers, some tools. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I hope you found this helpful.